Jane is 28. Several years ago, she was hospitalized twice and is currently in psychotherapy. She and the doctor are meeting for the first time. The interview lasted one hour. Dr. Harold F. Searle stated the following regarding his approach to this interview. My endeavor in this interview is to help the patient to discover in herself areas of feeling and thought which she had not experienced before to this degree. To help her find meaningful connections between her perception of and response to this interview on the one hand and previously unremembered experiences of the events and situations of her childhood on the other. My effort in general is to be alert to and at suitable junctures to invite her collaboration in exploring the indications of psychological illness in herself. In short, tell me as fully as you can whatever you find yourself uh, thinking, feeling, noticing. Do you mean uh, my surroundings right now? No, I, that's a bit of a broad question, you see, and uh, if you could be more specific, I could uh, answer your question. All right. Now, I feel that when you say that if I would be a bit more specific, you sort of slap me around as though to slap me into place. Not at all? Not at all. You no. don't see where I get such an impression. No, I don't. I see people don't ordinarily get that kind of impression of your way of, as they say, relating. Well, uh, people, um, when they think of how I relate, they, um, I think they think I relate in a way that's not quite uh, the way they do, perhaps. You look there for a moment, something as though you were reciting something. No, I'm nervous. You're nervous? My first time on camera. I see. First time. Mm -hmm. I get some impression, nonetheless, that you either are very much on the offensive or very much on the defensive. Do you have any thought about that? Well, I'm a bit on the offensive and defensive, yes. You are? Because uh, if you don't mind me being blunt, I'm being cross-examined. Oh, you are? You see, so of course I'd have to be a bit on the defensive, you see. Had you more or less assumed you would be cross-examined, or what? Yes. I see. Well, I was prepared for it. I see. So you hadn't intended that as any reproach? Hmm? No, no. I was just turning over in my mind whether you might uh, steal into my bedroom at night. No, no, you told me. As silently and kill me with a long, slender, poison-tipped stiletto. Does, do you sound like a candidate for No, I'm not. If I was... Fantasies? Huh? If I was going to do that, I wouldn't be here now. I'd be in an institution. Everyone does have some fantasies of that kind of thing, you know, murder. How do murder mysteries get written? You know. But uh, this doesn't worry me. You know. uh, all right. What are you trying to say? That you're more worried about suicide? Does that get closer to some of your... Uh, I've been a bit worried about suicide, yeah. I uh, have come close to it a number of times. I've never actually committed it. You say that you've never committed suicide. No, well, I'm still here. No, I've never made an attempt to. And, uh, but you, you, you noticed that you said that you never have committed suicide. No. Well, then doesn't that interest you? To know why I've never committed suicide? No, no. That you say that you never have committed suicide. You mean, does it not interest me to say that? It interest you that you said that. That is, it, you seem to have some thought that it should be obvious that you have never committed suicide. Well, uh... I would be, um, but is this as though there's some doubt in you? No, I can what? see people... That you are alive or that you exist? Hmm? No, I, you know, what I meant was uh, I can see people disbelieving me. You know, to a lot of people I seem a bit strange, perhaps. You know, a very, perhaps very slightly different. And I can see where they might be skeptical about uh, me uh, saying that I've never made a suicide attempt, you know. You say you have been in the hospital? On um, two occasions it was voluntary. It was my decision, and uh, it was a, a very... May I mention the name, or should I not? Name of the hospital? I don't know that it's... I think... Well, uh, well it wasn't I would sure. suggest that... No, I don't know. Probably, well, if you do not. Yeah, well, the thing was... It, it, it gets into the question of how uh, 
how private do you wish your life to be kept? Hmm? As private as possible. Anyway, this wasn't well, a provincial hospital. You wouldn't hospital, be here so if you wanted that entirely, would you? I like uh, the being the center of attention. Hmm. That it wasn't a. Uh, well, then that's something that's the has the makings of what they call an emotional conflict, doesn't it? If you want to keep your life yeah, as emotional. private as possible. Yeah. That's and yet you also want to be the center of attention, huh? Yeah, that's a conflict for me right now. I'm here and talking to you, and uh, at the same time, I'm a private person. Of course, it's a conflict. Now, that's why I had two drinks before I came. Oh, you did? Yeah, the effect wore off. Is there any, as they say, ideation? Is there any thought content? Is there any, are you thinking anything or feeling anything when you do that? You know, I'm wearing a wig and I'm trying to make sure it's in place. For the second time now, so far, yeah. I have a sudden sense that you're a young man. You do, do you? Mm -hmm. Is uh, it partly the dress? I think so, and the, the hairdo. Like uh, now, is that also not? Uh, it's calculated. Not uh, unheard of for you to dress like this? For 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 somebody you're with. To ask me that? To tell you that, or to, to ask you. This is the first time. No one's ever mentioned it. That's why I'm looking surprised. Uh, this type of dress is worn today by women, too, you see. Uh, I'm not part, it's quite calculated, actually. It's the way I feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable in feminine things or acting silly, you see. But um, here again, we're getting into the as double standards, you see. Again, slap me. Again, as if you suddenly slap me. Uh, of course, I silly. Well, um, and I'm mindful that you've said absolutely nothing about your uh, growing up years, your parental family life, and so on. And I've not asked you anything about it. Well, I'm certainly going to talk about that. I would assume that slaps uh, figured in it. I was hit until I was 13. Sudden slaps. I was hit until I was 13. And at your 13th birthday, that stopped. I told my father I, can't, I don't want. I like. I can't. Don't want anymore. I said I'm too old. You said to me that you didn't I want any more slaps. I did. So he stopped. Is the, the camera or the cameraman, what's your thought about what uh, you find so distracting? Uh, I'm always distracted. There's nothing to do with him. In fact, I'm not noticing him. Yeah. It's like we're in a private room, yeah. No, I spoke to them before you came in, so I'm used to them by this time. No, I'm all, I, I always uh, appear to be a bit distracted and nervous. It's uh, something I can't help, you know. It's unfortunate because we're on camera. If someone could light my cigarette, I could be more relaxed. If someone that was planned. Yeah. <laughs> if someone could, I'll leave. I can't light it. Huh? You can't light the cigarette. No, I can't, because I I think a bit of a problem with spatial perception. I can't see how it's done, and I'll be doing it for the next hour and a half if you don't light it for me. Would you? Well, would you care to try it? Well, I almost burned the place up once today, and I'll try it. You almost burned this place up once no, I earlier. Huh? No, I started. The last thing was on fire. Here's you want. You don't want my match, huh? I don't have that. This is bigger, huh? That one's bigger than this one. Huh? Yes. Uh, okay, I'll uh, light uh, the cigarettes. I'll show you what will happen. I can't do it. No, you don't have the same trouble. When did you decide that? How could you? <laughs> I start to get confused as to which is the match, well, which not... are the matches, and which are the cigarettes. I'm not confused as to a... which is which. I'm just afraid of fire, you see, and uh, that's from, I'm not confused as to what's what. No, I have no... Uh, I didn't say you were confused. I said I was... Well, I imply that you that I think you're confused. But I was saying that I start getting confused. But I don't. I know which is the match. It's just that I'm afraid of lighting it. You see, this is the problem. Now, when you've said that you had two drinks, two glasses of wine, yeah. Uh, before coming here. At ten thirty. Yeah. By all what I felt uh, duped, as they say. You did. Back in mid-Victorian literature, I felt duped. And then when you spoke about wearing a wig, I felt uh, once again I'd been duped. Oh, I cut my hair and I didn't like it this way. 
So I have to wonder when what next will prove to be only a an illusion. An illusion, huh? I don't know. No, I'm, I am as you see me. I'm wearing a wig. My hair was cut short. I don't like it. Three times so so far, I feel a sudden sense of fatigue. I'm a tiring person. Yeah, uh, other people have felt that. I'm tired too. You are. Yeah. Well, do you suddenly become aware of fatigue? I haven't eaten. Like, I haven't eaten very much today. I do. I do get. Uh, but aware uh, suddenly how huh? that is a big problem of mine, fatigue anyway you see that's affected in my life very much you see uh, it's made it very difficult to do things that other people take for granted like studying or things of that sort now when your father stops laughing you uh, I think I start with his own a sudden fatigue sudden fatigue huh? had overcome him no I just think that uh, I don't know what my father felt when he stopped it uh, distractibility is really infuriating. Is that what seemed to impel him to slap you? He'd, would he say, pay attention? No, I think Stuff that's... like that? No, no just see, he got impatient over certain things, which shouldn't have been, you see. He was going through a very difficult time with his work, you know, and the marriage, I think, wasn't terribly good. I don't think it's good even today. And these things, I was too young to realize them, you see. I didn't understand. And he was, like I said, it's something that made him impatient. Like, my mother was very impatient. My mother was very impatient, you was. see. Yes, she was. You see, and uh, for little things like not knowing how to tie my shoelaces fast enough, you know, things like that. I was slapped for that, yeah. So, so because By her? Was, you were slapped by her? Yeah. Well, so I was hit in two occasions, yeah. You, had, you don't mention by whom. You've my mentioned mother. twice having been hit. No, my mother took occasions. me at once and uh, took half my clothes off and hit me uh, for about 20 minutes, but it wasn't hard, you see. There's no physical, uh, there's no physical damage done, you see. Yeah, I just, I don't like people to get the wrong idea of me because they're, um, I have to be on the defensive in any case. I do appear somewhat unusual. And I know people are aware of it, you know. So I don't want them to start thinking I'm up a rock or something like that. Yeah. You know, um, this has been my experience with people. They do to find something unusual about me. You know, in fact, I'm a bit nervous and I'm a bit fast talking, you know. And, uh, I mean, perhaps other things, so. I have to be wary of other people's impression. I can't always judge either whether for me or against me. You, you sound in a way that you walk a tightrope. I don't doubt that you walk many, but oh, you, sure. you know, I feel that you cherish being regarded as unusual and yet have real concern not to be regarded as schizophrenic or too unusual or something like that. I would want to be regarded as too unusual. No? Not except by enlightened people, broad-minded people. And this about cameras, I feel really what you say, that you attribute a lot of your reactions to the fact that we're on camera. No, I'm not even noticing it. Well, but I think that in your daily life you feel at least on as camera? much on camera I do, yeah. as you do here in this well, yeah. fashion. I do. Things I tend to have to avoid a certain number of things, like not going to work and stuff like that, yeah. My, my life has to be modified in that way, but uh, it's going to be ended soon. I'm most likely going Are to be ended soon. No, I don't mean I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to probably you did, you did pull my socks up. That way. No, I meant I was going to pull my socks up and start getting active again. You see, no, I wasn't talking about suicide. I'm not anywhere close to suicide at this, one, at this given moment. You say that somewhat ironically, as though you're saying that you're sorry to disappoint me. Huh? No, I haven't disappointed you. I'm sorry, but um, I'm not close to suicide at this moment. I'm maybe two hours later, but I'm not now. You see. You talk as though, for as a matter of fact, you don't know how you will feel. Well, does anyone know how the they're going to moment? feel? Hmm? Tell me, does anyone know that how they're going to feel? Well, uh, let's put it this way. Well, you you speak about uh, I'm predicting the future with great certainty in some regards. Well, I know I will never kill myself. I've got a strong character. Hmm. I can never, and I'm afraid. And you're what? I'm afraid. You see, that's the main reason I haven't done it. I'm scared. You know, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I'd be terrified of it. Uh, that moment, you know, before one is nothing. And I'm not a believer, you see, so there's no afterlife. So where would it get me? And I'm too conceited to uh, just want to disappear like that, you see. Without having done anything of any significance, you know. Which is not likely you, that I'll do you, anything. One, one any thing you're doing, I think, is... I'm moving my feet too much. Well, but you're making the end of our interview. No. 
sound equivalent to death. Hmm? I didn't aware, wasn't aware we were at the end. Don't mean to have to interview, I'll have to be on camera, I'll not be on camera, it'll be a bit disappointing, but uh, for the first few hours, but I'm prepared for that. Well, speak from past experience. So this is, I will get a mild reaction like that after this thing today's finished and again on Monday, you know. When do you see your therapist next? Next Friday. Hmm. I can see him sooner if I want, hmm. but I don't uh, choose to. I don't think he would uh, be terribly helpful. You don't have to be concerned about me uh, being too disturbed about it, really. Nothing's going to happen. So I gather anyway, we're going to stop. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, first of all, I don't think we covered too much. But I didn't have a terribly favorable idea, opinion, really, of... Uh, uh, what really happened about the doctor? I don't have a terribly favorable opinion of what the doctor thought of me, you know, what he would think of me. In fact, I wouldn't want to be treated by such a person. I did learn something about myself, but, um... He made an interesting remark about my acting like a guy. And he talked... He made another interesting remark about, um, me being like a child whose, uh, face was being slapped by his mother. Those are two insightful things, and there's, um... I could go on and on on those subjects at length. You see, the, the problem is this is a, a simulated situation and uh, it makes it really difficult to uh, talk freely, you know, and it makes it hard for me to judge the doctor's reactions too at the same time. I don't know how much is put on for the camera or how much isn't, you know, so that's, that is the problem. My approach? Mm. It's partly for the camera, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Mm. Uh, I would have been much, perhaps, even more nervous and more agitated if I'd seen him in uh, private, in his office. You see, I was making a considerable effort to appear calm and sophisticated. So I would have acted uh, quite differently if I'd seen him in this, in private consultation. He seemed to think that I wanted to kill him or something. The persecution complex, it seemed to me he had. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't have uh, too much to say other than that. I want to report first, while it's still fresh in me, something of the feeling I have following the interview. It is, uh, it, as best I can articulate it, it is an uneasy fear that I have committed a terrible wrong, something as I've thought of it, something equivalent to murder. That is, I think that I am feeling, following my separation from her, something of the kind of uh, depression and uh, perhaps even shock isn't too strong a word. There's something of the, of the ugly, uncomfortable anxiety that I think she tends to experience at times of separation. She gave us to understand that times when she uh, evidently feels most uh, uh, suicidally inclined are at times of separation or times of a, of a recent separation having occurred. Now one of the things that I uh, liked about the interview was the fact that it brought to light the, to my mind, fact that uh, although many of her reactions she wanted to be attributed to the fact of it being filmed. The interview nonetheless brought to light uh, to my, uh, uh, in a way convincing to me, that her daily life is lived in a state of at least uh, recurrently as much uh, self, I was going to say confidence, self, uh, self uh, consciousness as she had during this interview. Now my slip in my thoughts, and I was going to say self-confidence, reminds me of the self-confidence she manifested uh, really, really throughout the interview, certainly recurrently. On the one hand, she looked extremely anxious, extremely distractible and threatened, and eyes darting about a lot. 
But on the other hand, she repeatedly gave me to know and reminded me of something of how strong a person she is and that she can call her therapist if need be, and she made clear to me that she is able to call him if she feels it necessary prior to next Friday. Uh, this distractibility of hers uh, seemed to me to be a symptom of her, that I refer to her eyes darting about so much particularly, seemed to me to have to do with her fear of her own strength more than anything. Because times when she would look directly at me, it would have a rather startling intensity. And I felt that she is a person with a great deal of strength, but is afraid of her strength. That is afraid lest it do harm to others. I, I of course, feel that it uh, took great courage for her to take part in this. And I think that her having done so uh, was motivated partly by a genuine concern on her part to help other troubled persons. That's all of my comments about the interview. Time. The interview lasted one hour. Dr. R. D. Lang stated the following regarding his approach to the patient psychiatrist relationship. The heart of the matter is open heartedness. Only by the openness of one's own heart to those who come to us as patients can we expect their hearts to settle down from the varieties of terror and trepidation, consternation and panic which they bring with them. The way each person must take to emerge from their nightmare is unique. It is this movement, the movement they are already taking, which one must intuitively sense. So that essentially speaking, all one has then to do is to remove whatever obstacles one has the capacity to remove in order that the movement can happen and to trust it. speak of it better if you would begin by asking me a few pointed questions and then I can get on to uh, what I want to say from there. Uh -huh. uh, if you ask me to start any place, yes. I would remain silent. Yes. All right. Um, uh, could you tell me um, how old you are and where yeah. you live? And, I'm uh, 28. Uh, and how you live, I mean, in, in what, what sort of context you live? Do you live uh, alone or uh, with friends? Or I live with, with family. my family, mm -hmm. which has been, I think, my major source of disturbance. Mm -hmm. uh, it caused a lot of hassles, you know. Mm -hmm. And I live right in this city. And it's... Who, 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 what does your family consist in? Oh, uh, right now it's my mother and my father. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm the only one there. And of course, I'm much too old to live with the family, you see. You're much too old? Too old. Uh, to live with the family. May I ask how old you are? 28. 28? And yeah. seven months. Mm -hmm. So, um, you, ha you have, you got brothers and sisters, but... Uh, one uh, sister. Uh, one sister. Uh, older? Yeah. It's younger. Uh, how old? Uh, 25. 25. Very precise about your age. Uh, well, I can't forget it. Mm. You, mm. you mean 
I don't mean in terms of um, at 28 years and seven months. When is this under 30? Yeah. Mm. I'm so coming on for 30, which. Mm. Oh, it's a year and a half away. Mm. Mm. It's 30. I know 30 is for many. Uh, Devastating experience, mm. yeah. Mm. With my family? Mm. Uh, it hasn't always been a hassle, it's been so lately, when I realized how disturbing an influence the family was uh, giving me. Uh, so the hassle really started about a few years ago at that point, when I was no longer uh, content to live with the family. Mm -hmm. you know, and I realized that uh, most 90% of my uh, problems are caused by that. You know? So it is quite a conflict. Um, well, what sort of hassles? Well, I had some, not outward hassles, but um, what I meant in terms of what one feels, you know, by doing things that our parents disapprove of and things of this sort. Even at my age, one can get a tremendous feeling of guilt at even doing a simple thing, like making this film, you know. I got quite a bit of hassles over this, mm. you know. And, uh... You mean internally? Uh, yeah. Or between you and your parents as well? Huh? Well, uh, no, it's not. We don't, my family and I do not fight or quarrel. I'm just talking in terms of how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It has quite a damaging effect that way. And I think at my age, I'm much too old to have to put up with that kind of uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, now, have you been in psychotherapy? Yeah, I had uh, altogether about five years off and on. I'm seeing a doctor right now. You know, psychotherapy has not really helped me. My drugs has not really helped me. It's um, reading your book and uh, being alone a week when my family was overseas and feeling so much better and mm -hmm. almost uh, uh, happy. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, it's psychotherapy reading uh, can't do very much or the kind of psychotherapy I've been getting, you know. Well, psychotherapy itself can't mm -hmm. do anything at all. It can't. Uh, well, you know what I mean. Uh, well, well, I don't know whether it's uh, I thought it a would misleading work. statement. I, I mean, the idea that sort of uh, psychotherapy depends, I think, entirely on whether you uh, are clicking with, uh, whether there's a thing working in the right way for you between you and the therapist. Yeah. And what actually uh, has led you or continues to lead you to get into a situation of being a patient in the hospital? Well, I haven't been in hospital for about four or five years and I don't intend to go back. I was no. in voluntarily. I was not committed. Mm -hmm. what, what, why did you go in? Well, the first time I went in for a specific reason, I, um, besides my usual problems, I got into a terrible state where I fell for a guy at the university, a professor, and really I uh, was completely out of it. In addition to the other problems I have, and I could do no work whatsoever or nothing. Uh, I lost about 20 pounds, and uh, I went in for that reason. But wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a superficial reason uh, why I went well, in. Well, I mean, it's a very profound experience. Oh, huh? It is? Falling in love. I thought it was trivial. Mm -hmm. oh, not not I have no sense of that. Nothing. Uh, so well, you might have. Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, I don't see how you can say something is uh, trivial when it was obviously all that important. No, I mean, that was the accumulating event, the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm. Is this uh, when you were about 20? Uh, mm -hmm. From 19 to uh, 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so I would. Um, like if I studied, say, more than two hours, I would uh, feel very uncomfortable, you know, physically and otherwise, and uh, I could never go back to my work even after a long lunch break. Uh, 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 I just feel uh, a certain tension in the head, certain physical feelings, and uh, my thoughts would not work, and I would feel quite depressed and uh, very uncomfortable. I see. You know, sit down at a book. No, this would be about two hours after. Uh, I would get tired, you see. Yes, but the way you got tired, uh, you, you trying you're to study when I had no uh, ability to uh, oh, well, follow uh, intellectual ideas, you see. <laughs> uh, oh, well, wait a minute. Uh, yeah. you, you start, uh, you start um, with a book, what, in the, in the campus library or something like that, uh, yeah. specifically, yeah. and after two hours or so of that. So, no, that's an hour and a half, that's my limit. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not and my then limit. What, you would get tension in your, all around your head? Oh, I have a slight feeling of. Talk to you? Not physical, it's inside. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, mm. feeling I have now when I'm not, uh, as I'm getting relaxed. Mm. 
Uh, is, it, is, is, it tend, is, it, is it a feeling of pressure going pressure. this way or that way? Inside. Both ways. Yeah. This way. Huh? Yeah, inside, like this. Inside, yes. Yeah, and uh, after a long... Can you do that again just so I get... The, you actually did that without me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, I did it instinctively. Mm -hmm. did, could, um, could um, I have a cigarette? Certainly. I don't have uh, matches. No, it wasn't matches, yeah. yeah. Could you light mine? I have yes. trouble lighting a match. Yes, it's all right. So anyway, they base their uh, uh, judgments on my physical, you know, ability to, to withstand stress on, on that uh, alone. And that was one of the top doctors in North America, you see. Uh, thank you. It, uh, Is it going? Feebly. I don't know how to smoke anyway, I just inhale. I don't even inhale. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I've often, uh, in one of in my own uh, exploration to get to the, uh, one of the, the um, things that struck me about my own um, head was that, um, my uh, head uh, had be become a sort of womb, oh. <laughs> and uh, in a way one's inside the uh, head, and um, I don't know when one's uh, studying a book, it's, uh, you get into very, um, well, I, neither of us actually have got words for this, because the no. words peter out yeah. when we uh, I couldn't describe this kind of thing in words at mm. all. Very difficult. Mm -hmm. Put it into words. Yeah. Do you put it into anything else? Do you find it in music or in oh, poetry really. or music, yeah. dancing? Or? Yeah, I write poetry. It's mm. uh, one of the ways of expressing yourself, and uh, I can express myself really only one way by music playing the piano. Or li listening to music or playing the piano, that's when I can be, how do you say it, uh, a sane, normal person. Mm. That's that and being in the limelight are really the two, the two only times. Do you play the piano well? I could if I were to work at it more. In fact, I'm going to. Yeah, I could. I don't want to sound conceited. I could be a virtuoso quality if I had worked at it. And you know, I know it, so I, I You've don't... You've got a talent. Yeah, I don't mind saying it. It's true. Yes. No, well, it's I, true. I, I how do you say it? It's good. It's, I could, uh, if yeah. you've got a uh, talent, you should certainly recognize yeah, it and respect it and uh, not be embarrassed about yeah. uh, so it's acknowledging it. The only way I can express... I don't express myself well with people. I don't relate well at all. I was told this when I was in the hospital. I hadn't thought anything about that, so I was told it. I didn't have been told a whole lot of Absolutely. very negative things well, about yourself. They put me in the hospital and they observed me for five days. Observed, yeah. Uh, like an animal in a zoo. And after I was observed, they told me I don't relate well to people, I'm afraid of people. It so doesn't it, sound to me that yeah. though, as though they were relating very well to you observing you for five days. I, know, I mean, I, if I was in a crowd of people who were observing me for five days, I'd find it quite difficult to relate to them. Yeah, I couldn't. It's very difficult to relate to anyone who's observing you like that. I know. I know I was on the camera every minute, you know, and, uh, you know. But uh, in a way, it seems to me that you're more in touch with your feelings than many people are. So. I thought about them a lot. Uh, and you've obviously felt them a lot. Yeah, and knowing that this thing is going to be finished and I'm not going to be in the limelight. And uh, I, that's going to throw me off for four weeks, you know, I know it. You see, so I... Four weeks? I mean, that's how it goes, yeah. I can't eat or sleep or do anything for four weeks and I'm in a state of... It's literally a horrifying, honestly, you know. But uh, I'm used to that. Uh, and it's coming out of the limelight. Well, uh, I don't have that just because I'm coming out of the limelight. I uh, live with that every day now. It's, it's become an everyday already, already occurrence, you know, and it's... Uh, uh, and there's only one way to do that, which is to throw yourself off the CBC tower. You know, I've come close to that on two occasions, uh, but uh, I haven't quite uh, reached that point, but I see no way of dealing with that kind of thing. You know, hospital doesn't help that, you know. And I know it's... Uh, it doesn't frighten me that much because I know it's caused by certain tensions that I can quite easily get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> sorry, if I were, had the courage to do so, you know. Well, uh, easier said than so, done. You know, so, yeah, uh, so. I would quite like to, um, uh, w w would it be possible for us to um, uh, stop for two or three minutes. I'd just like to stretch my legs. Sure. 
Mm -hmm. Might go and play sure. the piano. Yeah. Sure. Could I have uh, a glass of water? Sure. Okay. And uh, and then we'll come back to it. Sure. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. I've uh, got a piano next door. Do you um, feel that um, uh, well, let's take me specifically. Do you feel that I've got um, that I might could uh, possibly have any uh, understanding of? I mean, what you really are into. Uh, yeah. I would say so. Thank you. Well, in that case, it's not as hopeful as it might sure. be. <clears throat> Matches are getting small and small. <laughs> an Indian um, uh, aquapuncturist and so on. If there was someone like that uh, opening up these channels of um, the subtle channels in the body that if they can be opened up in the floor, going, uh, feel immediate relief. Yeah. I don't know whether you have ever... Uh, there's two points just in there. Here? <laughs> In your face, uh, do you mind me no. getting in? No. Uh, uh, uh. Um, well, I, I, I get it. I, I get my own with my finger. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, do it. Sure. Just get yourself in. I tell you what, yeah. just uh, uh, oh, relax. Yes, relax. Okay. Whatever. Right. Whatever is over your life. There's all these wires around it's very yeah. difficult. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, that's um, more professional, I think you get more relaxed. Oh, oh. Did so, I get an electric shock from it? Sure, that's a wig. <laughs> it's the carpet. <laughs> it's funny what you find out. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a, an artificial wig. It's an artificial wig. Don't pull it, it off. No, I won't. It was perfectly convincing. It'll shock the cameraman. It was perfectly convincing. I know. Where did the electricity come from? The carpet. meeting is going? To some extent. Not completely. What, what, uh, no, I see. Pardon? Uh, you said to some extent, uh, so to the other extent, uh, you mean, uh, the, are you, uh, what criticism, say, would you make of, uh, a way of going about it? Or in what respect are you less happy than you might have, might be given the circumstances? Uh, actually, I cannot answer that question, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. no, it's, uh, uh, 
I'm afraid I could not answer it. No, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But uh, I'm going to keep uh, my thoughts to myself mm. on this uh, particular matter. Uh, but I hope you will let me uh, know, not necessarily, uh, that we're not in front of the cameras, but before, before, before I go off, there's uh, anything about the way I've conducted yeah, I'll tell you in that you find objectionable. No, I don't find it objectionable at all. I won't tell you in private what I was thinking. Oh. This last uh, few minutes, I think, will yeah. have to serve in front of the camera for my comments. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, uh, just taking uh, up that, sir, the, it sounds to me that you were in perfectly good faith, went along to a place where you hoped that uh, you'd get help, and you get the, you got the opposite of uh, help. But you wanted to send it instead of, uh, I mean, with a shaky self-esteem, uh, uh, and so on, we, you were observed for five days and then uh, couldn't have been at all, e uh, made it in any way easier. I mean, if I was in the state uh, that you, you describe yourself as being uh, in and uh, knowing now what these places are like, which are the very opposite of places that uh, offer hospitality. I mean, if you, a hospital is a place where it's, it's, it's supposed to be hospitable. It's sort of the meaning of the word, especially if one's shaky or not well and so on, etc., etc. Uh, and uh, if, if uh, one goes to uh, on to a place where I would have thought uh, what one needed was to be genuinely welcomed and accorded hospitality uh, and uh, safety as far as other people, and then it's a terrible way to be hospitable to someone, to observe them for uh, five days, and after observing them for five days, accuse them of not being able to um, form relationships. Um, so I, I think that uh, now you've got, you've, you've got uh, quite a lot of psychiatric treatment to recover from, which is probably uh, more, which must uh, be um, difficult to, uh, disentangle from uh, what you went to the hospital in the hope of uh, achieving in the first place. But uh, well, we, we, we can have a word about what might be possible within the, within your own framework. Um, at any rate, before I leave Canada, I would like to mull over it and um, uh, I can either probably write you. Give me a chance, give, 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 give this, give what you've put to me a chance to sink in for a bit. Dr. Lane, a very uh, nice person to talk to. And um, I wish I could have talked to him in private, you know, about some, a number of other things. I thought that could be quite helpful. Well, I think I learned, uh, uh, I learned how I could potentially help myself. I didn't learn too much about what has caused uh, my um, problems, but uh, I think that if I could have been in a situation where I could have, had, I could have that help, you know, I, when it was necessary, I could, um, I would be much better. In fact, uh, I think I'm, I feel almost, I could consider myself almost a healthy person, you know, just uh, on the basis of this interview. As I said, if I had had the chance to talk to a person like that on a daily basis or when it was necessary, I would, uh, be much less disturbed, but, uh, it's not always possible to get someone like that. But uh, again, um, talking to uh, someone like Dr. Lang might make one feel better at the time or for a few days after. It might not necessarily take away uh, the disturbance ultimately, though. You know, but uh, I'm not terribly concerned about that. I'm just concerned with being comfortable. You know, 